Canadians are still trusting and, and giving some, uh, looking for the Liberal Party to lead mm -hmm. this country. Because we have historically been the party that has brought change and innovation to Canada. Up until now, to vote for the leader of the Liberal Party, you had to be a member, card carry member, as you mm -hmm. said, of the Liberal Party. That meant filling out an application form, paying $10 minimum mm -hmm. fee, which then makes you a member. Now you have both. You can be a member, of course, but we also have what we call the supporter category. Okay. So you can go online on the Liberal Party website mm -hmm. and uh, fill in your name, address, phone number, your emails, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and say that you are a supporter, that you are not a member of any other political party, mm -hmm. and that's all. And you don't have to uh, pay any money. It just goes straight into your, your yeah, support. Right. Two completely different things. Okay. As you said, we had a surplus, mm -hmm. but we also got rid of the deficit. But we invested in people. We invested in the economy, mm -hmm. and we invested in research. Mm -hmm. Even before we had the financial crisis, before mm -hmm. the 2008 crisis, mm -hmm. um, Harper had brought this country to a deficit situation and there was no need. You have the ability in Canada to prosecute mm -hmm. under Canadian law um, corruption that a Canadian company, if a Canadian company has corruption activities outside, mm -hmm. or there's human rights situations. Um, uh, uh, that, that are affected. So what I would do is I would enforce the bill. Mm -hmm. It's there. We passed the legislation in the Parliament of Canada. There's a law in the books which the current government is ignoring. Chers amis, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs, welcome to this special interview. Aujourd'hui, les réseaux de la diaspora est honoré. Nous avons eu le privilège d'avoir pour vous un des députés les plus anciens, euh, n'est-ce pas, du Parlement du Canada. Pour vous, les réseaux de la diaspora qui aimaient pour le peuple de la diaspora à travers le monde et spécifiquement à partir de Toronto, fait le tour pour rencontrer les leaders de la politique canadienne. Avec eux, nous essayons de discuter des différentes réformes qu'on le voit au Canada. On discute des politiques de leur parti politique. Nous discutons souvent et surtout d'ailleurs sur le bien-être du peuple de la diaspora par rapport aux réformes canadiennes. Alors aujourd'hui, j'ai euh, avec moi, vous pouvez le voir à ma droite, je suis honoré de recevoir pour vous, euh, Madame Honorable Mariamina. Bonjour Mariamina. Bonjour. Voilà, Mariamina, c'est une députée, elle a été pendant 17 ans et demi, quasi 18 ans, députée euh, fédérale euh, pour le compte du Parti libéral dans le riding des euh, euh, Beaches East York, c'est ici vers le Scarborough. Elle a également été euh, secrétaire parlementaire pour la citoyenneté et immigration au niveau fédéral toujours, et surtout le poste le plus important, à notre sens, c'est le poste qu'elle a occupé en tant que ministre canadien de la coopération internationale. Mme Mina, c'est un très grand honneur pour nous de vous avoir dans la Diaspora Network TV. La Diaspora Network TV est vue dans le monde, beaucoup de gens de la Grande-Bretagne, de la Grande-Bretagne, de la France, de la Belgique, de l'Europe, de l'Afrique et du Middle East ont été suivis de cette network. We have reached over uh, 10,000 visits per month, mm -hmm. which means everything we're going to be discussing tonight is going to be broadcast around the world. Okay. As I was saying, it's an honor for us. Perhaps before we start with our questions, I would ask if you could introduce yourself to our viewer, a uh, little something about yourself, and then we will start with our questions. Absolutely. Um, as you said, my name is Maria Mina. I, uh, I came to Canada when I was uh, nine years old, so I'm an immigrant to this country like many of us in this room. Mm -hmm. um, I worked uh, initially because my family was poor. So my job was to work, help financially and put my sisters through school okay. and help pay the mortgage for my parents, the home that we lived in. I went to university later in my mid twenties as a mature student, mm -hmm. once the obligations in the house uh, and the financial situation was better. Okay. Uh, of course, I paid for my own education, finished university and um, then uh, I also got involved politically as an act, as an act, uh, as a member of the Liberal Party. Okay. But I became more at that time an activist, community activist. Uh, I've worked as as well for, for so I was doing three things. I was working because you have to make money to survive. I was an activist for immigrant people. I was ad advocating on behalf of immigrants' rights, and I was also involved with the Liberal Party. So that kind of evolved over the years after about 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. I then was asked to run for office mm -hmm. uh, by the then leader of the Liberal Party, Jean Chrétien, who then, who was of course then became Prime Minister, and uh, he asked me to run in this particular riding. 
which I agreed to, and uh, you know, you've let us. Rest is history, in a way. Definitely, and we'll <laughs> get to that uh, question. We have a very specific question that's been identified in that leadership role. Well, Mary Mina, for many immigrants, uh, specifically uh, the African immigrants who speak either French or English, many of them have been have benefit from your services. Uh, most of them, before we get to our interview, we we attend to ask questions to our viewer to mm -hmm. find out if we were met with X or X person. What would you like to know? Mm -hmm. And the question that came for the most part, uh, while we were, you know, uh, uh, talking to our viewers, was to find out: Can we still, or is still, Mary Amina a leader in the Liberal Party, and does she have any plan to rerun for the Liberal Party from the same riding? Of course, yes to all of those. Mm -hmm. I'm still very active in the Liberal Party. Um, in fact, today, this morning, I was a uh, guest speaker at a, the, a Women's International uh, event okay. uh, in the Chinese Canadian community. I was representing our leader, Bob Ray. Mm -hmm. earlier, uh, earlier before that, I was at a meeting which I organized called Greater Toronto Area Liberals, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm pulling together all of the writings in one group so that we can be stronger, mm -hmm. better organized, and, and uh, have a stronger voice. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, and in, the, in this writing, of course, I'm still active very much. So, so yes, I, I, the Liberal Party has been part of my life since I was 24, and I don't intend to stop just yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you spoke about John Cretton a little earlier, mm -hmm. and you mentioned also that he has requested that you run on his right. behalf in right. this writing. Mm -hmm. But what to, we seem to, to, to notice is like, ever since Jean Chrétien stopped being the Liberal, the leader for the Liberal mm -hmm. Party and the Premier of Canada, it seems that the Liberal Party leadership has weakened a little bit. Is there any plan you have in mind to stronger mm -hmm. the leadership of the Liberal Party in the near future? Well, that's true that uh, when uh, Prime Minister Chrétien retired, uh, we, we uh, Mr. Martin, Paul Martin was the next Prime Minister, mm -hmm. and we had some problems, uh, primarily due to leadership, let's face it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you do really well in leadership and sometimes you don't. Every party goes through the ups and downs. So we have had over the last couple of leaders some difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Liberal Party is, has a very long history in Canada. It's a very strong grassroots party. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now just finished, uh, for instance, uh, we're signing up new members mm -hmm. for the leadership that we That's are right. now going through. Mm -hmm. We have close to 300,000 new members that mm -hmm. we've signed up. So that shows that the strength of the party on, at the base, mm -hmm. at, on, at, uh, on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, we in this, in this organization, in my own writing, we have a very large, healthy mm -hmm. executive association for the Liberal Party. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, uh, the Canadians are still trusting and, and giving some, uh, looking for the Liberal Party to lead mm -hmm. this country. Because we have historically been the party that has brought change and innovation to Canada. Mm. You know, all of the immigration was under a little bit. The reforms came under the Liberals, the, national, the public health care mm -hmm. was under the Liberals, the Canada Pension Plan, mm -hmm. the unemployment insurance, the guaranteed income supplement, uh, and I could, the Charter Rights, which Charter protects right. which, right. everybody's rights in this country, all minorities, which were not was not the case before, including women, of course, sure. uh, was under uh, uh, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, Mr. Uh, so, the Liberal Party has a very strong, proud history in our country. And Canadians know that, and they remember that, and they're looking to our party to come back to that kind of uh, leadership, that kind of... Uh, so we are going through leadership. Mm -hmm. I am very optimistic that uh, we will, in fact, be able to uh, uh, get back to our to our uh, strength by the next election. You spoke about the leadership, and you yeah. spoke about the membership. Right. Uh, for the last past month, uh, many Canadian and specifically new immigrant who are associated or affiliated in the mailing distribution list of the Liberal Party, we have seen a different procedures as far as our rolling members and designing the leaders. Uh, before you had to be a Liberal Party member, a card holder of a Liberal Party member, mm -hmm. but it seems like that proceeding has changed. Mm -hmm. What is new and how um, a viewer who are following the leadership through the Liberal Party can subscribe themselves so that they can be part of the selection of the next leader for the Liberal Party? Okay, so what has changed is that 
up until now, to vote for the leader of the Liberal Party, you had to be a member, card carry member, as you mm -hmm. said, of the Liberal Party. That meant filling out an application form, paying $10 minimum mm -hmm. fee, which then makes you a member. Now you have both. You can be a member, of course, but we also have what we call the supporter category. Okay. So you can go online on the Liberal Party website mm -hmm. and uh, fill in your name, address, phone number, your emails, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and say that you are a supporter that you are not a member of any other political party mm -hmm. and that's all and you don't have to uh, pay any money it just goes straight in. You're, you're a supporter so you're able to vote for the leader that way now you the deadline for that registration though has passed mm -hmm. so it's too late for anyone who is not already registered the deadline was uh, last weekend mm -hmm. so uh, those that have that did register about 300,000 of them mm -hmm. people and if any of our audience out there has registered they should listen to this mm -hmm. the next deadline is March 14 okay so now everyone that is a member or a supporter of the Liberal Party mm -hmm. registered mm -hmm. now needs to register a second time mm -hmm. because the next vote will be one member, one vote. You don't go to a convention, everybody, every single member of the Liberal Party gets a vote. The 300,000 of subscribers. They had to be 300,000. Mm -hmm. So in order to vote though, we have to verify. You have to get a PIN number from the party. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens is, and I did this last week, you mm -hmm. go back online and you register now mm -hmm for the vote. Okay. And so what that does is verifies everything in your membership and then the party will email you or send you a PIN number okay. that will identify you as a legitimate voter mm -hmm. so that when you vote online or by the phone it's you 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 already have a PIN number it's, it's like having a code right. you have to give your your own personal code to be able to be allowed to vote mm -hmm. so that you this is to minimize anyone trying to create a bit of a of a mess and playing a bit of some, some joke with our party and creating confusion, trying to, you know, this way we know that if you don't have a number, you can't vote. And we know what your number is because the party office, when you phone in or you go online, every name will have a, there, there's a different a PIN number mm -hmm. and your name will be matched to your PIN. You've mentioned So uh, that's how that's going to work. You've mentioned that you, you put the number to avoid people from the outside of the party to come sort of... To interfere like, with the process, you know, because some people might decide to vote and say, oh, I'm uh, uh, John so-and-so uh, and I live and I'm going to vote because I'm a member. Yeah. And before somebody finds your name, but it's this way, you say, I'm so... You go online, you give your name and you give your PIN number. Mm -hmm. It's like giving your credit number. Oh, they know your name, but you have to give your, your credit number, your credit card, right? This gives you a specific ID number. So we know that that ID number is yours and yours alone, nobody else's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no one can actually can, can, can vote. Certainly. Yeah. Les amis, vous nous suivez à partir so du moment. that's it. So Certainly. Please yeah. follow. March 14 is the deadline. March 14, donc, pour les amis qui nous suivent, qui ne parlent pas anglais, right. nous sommes en train d'interviewer Maria Mina, elle est bilingue de toute façon, mais nous avons choisi pour les circonstances et vu l'importance des questions de faire l'interview en anglais pour s'assurer que nous avons le plus de détails possible. Alors pour les amis qui nous suivent ailleurs, le Parti libéral est le parti qui a dirigé le plus longtemps en termes de nombre d'années le Canada et c'est vrai, beaucoup se souviendront, beaucoup ont eu écho de Pierre Trudeau qui fut un grand premier ministre ici au Canada. Eh bien Pierre Trudeau, pour votre référence, était aussi un premier ministre du Parti libéral. Going through this leadership, Marimena, it's mm. quite obvious Everyone has in mind, I've thought a couple of candidates. I retain two of them, which I know pretty well. I'm referring to uh, Trudeau, the oui. son of uh, Justin, Pierre oui. Justin. And uh, we also witness a lady, which is very strong, has got a very strong Just leadership. Mm -hmm. That is right. So, oui. Do you, as a leader, a former uh, MP, and a person with a lot of influence in the Liberal Party, has a choice? What can you say about not perhaps each individual candidate, but I mean, we seem to see a difference between the youngest leadership, which mm -hmm. is uh, Mr. Trudeau, yeah. and we also seeing former mm -hmm. uh, leaders who have been writing pretty much the same time as you were. Mm -hmm. I do not want to call them as part of the uh, Jean Chrétien era, but we yeah. think that diversity, ladies, young, and the, 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 the former leaders from the Liberal Party, mm -hmm. do you have any sort of a preference? What can you tell our viewers about the choice they might perhaps be called to make in the, in the new future? Well, we have the people, uh, there's Justin Trudeau right now, I think on the numbers is ahead. Uh, then there's Mark Garneau mm -hmm. in second place. 
Mr. Mr. Garneau is an astronaut. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows him. He is a, a well respected person. He is very capable, very intelligent, and you know, obviously. Um, Madame Joyce Murray is um, uh, also very showing up and strong, uh, and she has been uh, running primarily on a on a on two things. One is the environment issue. Mm -hmm. The other one is the a, um, doing a one-time agreement with the NDP to try and uh, get rid And then, of course, there's uh, uh, Martin Cochon is the only candidate, actually, who was a minister under Jean Chrétien. Yes, sir. Uh, he is the only one. The others are, um, are all wealthy, very, very new people and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. um, at this, mo this moment, it looks like Justin Trudeau is up ahead in numbers. numbers. But if, depending on how many people register for the 14, and depending on how many people actually vote, you never know. It's it's. Uh, you never, you don't know the result until the very end. Very what I would advise people is to read up on the candidates, and decide which they prefer. Mm -hmm. I am uh, uh, leaning uh, toward Jean Trudeau at this point and Martin Cochon. Mm -hmm. They'd be my two, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, people can uh, look up and decide which of them uh, who they wish to, because uh, you have it's called preferential vote. For sure. You have to give your first and second and third choice. So. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason that justifies those two choices? Well, two yours? things. Mm -hmm. Justin Trudeau represents the new era and a, a, a different, uh, uh, a whole new start for the party. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Cochon, to me, represents, a young, he's a young person as well. He was actually the youngest minister when I was, we were in cabinet together. Mm -hmm. But he is also a very experienced, capable individual who has a lot of political experience. Mm -hmm. And so the two of them would make a very strong team. So, one of the two. Well, for those, for vous qui suivez justement ce débat, vous serez appelé à visiter le site du Parti libéral qui sera défilé sur l'écran. Oui. Vous pouvez y obtenir toutes les informations nécessaires, ainsi de suite. Vous m'avez posé la question de savoir si Mariamina parle français, and I wanted to find out in few words what Mariamina think about the new immigrant leadership within the Liberal Party. There's a lot of uh, African Indian, for example. Oui. They've been supporting the Liberal Party for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. but when you speak to them, they come with a single statement that suggests that so far we don't seem to have a great support to put up a leader or an MP that can perhaps become a minister. Why not? For instance, I spoke with a lady which is very dynamic in Ottawa, Rachel Decotte. She mm -hmm. hasn't run, she hasn't won any writing mm -hmm. so far, but she's still very engaged with the Liberal Party. Mm -hmm. What is the Liberal Party message toward the immigrant who looking at Canadian as their new country mm -hmm. and perhaps would like to serve as minister or MP in the near future? My message to, 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 to any immigrants, immigrants mm -hmm. because as I said, I was an immigrant, I am an immigrant myself. My message is to them to get engaged in the party. Some people um, look at politics and they say, well, oh, gee, I would like to run, uh, and but then don't have a base. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to come into a party to run with unless you are a very high profile, very star studded, sometimes that works. But really what works is identify an area that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. By that I mean a region. It, it could be the writing you live in, get in touch with the uh, Liberal Association, mm -hmm. get to know the people get to know the writing. If you think that that's a writing that you could potentially be a candidate in, mm -hmm. that's great. Get Try and, 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 and organize. If not, find another writing. But the thing is to find, to get involved with the previous election, work the election, mm -hmm. get to know the people, get to know the writing association, get to know the writing, um, um, the makeup of the, of, of the, of the electoral district, uh, who the electors are? Mm -hmm. Are they likely to, uh, to to be wanting someone uh, with your background mm -hmm. and your what you bring to the table mm -hmm. and all of that? And getting to and doing that, really becoming if, if active politically, because generally becoming elected if you have not been active politically is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult because you're coming from outside, being jumped into a political environment. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, never easy. Believe me, it's mm -hmm. never easy, as it was not for me, for anyone else, mm -hmm. to become a candidate. But it is more likely to become a candidate if you're active liberal, mm -hmm. if you're active in the party already. Mm -hmm. you have, so that way you develop supporters, you develop a network, you 
have you know uh, people who will support you, people who will push your name, push you forward, give you uh, give you moral assistance as well as financial. For sure, you need both. <laughs> e effective math. So in other words, there is no restrictions for those yeah. African Indians. So there's no restrictions at uh -huh. all. The only mm -hmm. restriction that sometimes is what we put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We do not. We make the assumption mm -hmm. that we can't do it, or mm -hmm. that it's that I'm not going to be accepted, mm -hmm. or that a visible minority person is not going to get there, mm -hmm. and the, and so we don't put ourselves forward. And that sometimes is a problem. Durant l'administration de Honorable Jean Chrétien, le Canadien ainsi que le monde ont été témoins d'un des surplus budgétaires. À plusieurs reprises, M. Paul Martin, qui à l'époque était, était ministre des Finances, a fait une performance qui avait mis le Canada au devant de la scène internationale pour une performance économique exemplaire. Today, we have a Harper and Conservative government mm -hmm. that look very solid. They've got a lot of initiatives. Mm -hmm. And they attend to convince uh, the Canadians, mm -hmm. obviously, they are, mm -hmm. they've got majority in the, in, the, in the House. If you were to look the previous administration you have been part of, and you're looking at the performance of the Conservative Party mm -hmm. today, and you're looking to the leadership of Mr. Harper as a person, mm -hmm. how do you quote the current government, and what do you think Libra will have done better looking at certain policies like economic policies, reforms, and immigrations? Ah, oh, you just gave me a fat. Do you have a day? <laughs> because it's like day and night. Right. Two completely different things. Okay. As you said, we had a surplus, mm -hmm. but we also got rid of the deficit. But we invested in people. We invested in the economy during, mm -hmm. and we invested in research. Mm -hmm. Even before we had the financial crisis, before mm -hmm. the 2008 crisis, mm -hmm. um, Harper had brought this country to a deficit situation and there was no need by doing two things. First, cutting the income coming in. So he cut the GST, he cut the taxes coming in. And then he, uh, and, which gave more money to the wealthy. Mm -hmm. And then he cut services okay. to the people who need them. So he would cut more, so he transferred, I'll give you some examples. He uh, decided, he eliminated the, the National Child Care Program, okay. which helps middle working families the most, mm -hmm. and children, mm -hmm. and women, obviously. Uh, he eliminated it, which I worked at 10 years to get established, worth t close to $10 billion in this country, eliminated it completely. Then he gave $100 a week to stay-at-home moms, because he was buying the vote that his core vote, the 35 percent of vote conservative, mm -hmm. he was not not buying. I shouldn't say that word, but he was, you know, sort of sort of say, you know, favoring. Mm -hmm. Now, the the problem is, a hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. doesn't even pay for a one a, a one hour's childcare, not even a day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because. The average of childcare in Toronto is 800 to 1200 a month mm -hmm. per child. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, he, it hurt badly. On women, we had 12 uh, centers across this country from the status of women Canada to, to help women with equality. We had, uh, we were going to be putting forward legislation on equal work for work of equal value, equal pay for work of equal value, pay equity. He shut down all the offices so there's no access. He sh took back all the money that was going out to women's organizations. They're not allowed to lobby on women's behalf anymore if they do any research for the government. Mm -hmm. So on women's issues, he pulled back again. There was no need. Remember, this was done on the first budget when we had a, we had a huge surplus, not after the, 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 the decline. To go on the economy situation, he did not believe in regulating banks. In fact, they, the, the, the banks in Canada were supposed to be deregulated a month after the crisis happened. If the crisis had not happened, they would have been deregulated. We'd have had the same problem that the Americans did and the, the rest of the world. As it turned out, and when he was in opposition, he wanted Paul Martin to deregulate the Canadian banks. We refused. We did not allow for the banks to be deregulated or for the merger of the banks, mm -hmm. which allowed our financial institutions to be more stable when the crisis hit. Um, so on the and, and since the recession, he's done absolutely nothing to lead this country out. He's relying entirely on the oil of Canada, the oil and the natural resources of Western Canada. There has been no vision of investing in a new industrial strategy for this country. 
And then on the immigration side, he's pretty much shut it down. He's now bringing in more temporary workers than he's bringing in full-time, uh, than he's bringing in immigrants. So last year, for the first time in our history, 300,000 temporary workers coming to Canada. Who, by the way, he said, it's okay to pay them 15% less than you pay the, the Canadian for the same job. So he wants to drive the wages down. And I could go on, I'm sorry, I get uh, this. This is a topic that makes me very hot, very angry, very passionate because it is hurting our country and it's hurting the people in our country, especially the immigrant communities. As an immigrant, uh, you have invested, you mentioned yourself, over $10 billion of a program that would have been benefit for Canadians. But what, what could be the thought for those viewers who are looking at this broadcast? Mm. Is it that Canadians don't understand what's going on with the Harper government? Mm -hmm. Or Canadians have made a choice that that is the way to fit with the new society that presents a lot of challenges worldwide? Actually, no. Harper only won by 35% of the vote. And even now, he's never had more than 30, 32, 33%. That is not the majority of Canadians. In fact, the majority of Canadians, which is, which is uh, over 60%, do not support Harper because they voted for other parties, not for his party. Our system is not very adequate because it's first past the post and it allows this distortion to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem for starters. The other problem is, that, I'll be very honest, our party failed the Canadians. Mm -hmm. We were not uh, uh, able to be up to the challenge of the, the last election, was not a good election for us. Mm -hmm. And a great deal of it has to do with the leadership at the time and, our, and how we dealt with things. So two major things were in play. But I would say that Canadians as a whole, if you look at the vote pattern, they do not actually support this government. Not the majority of Canadians anyway. While you were answering, you mentioned uh, the policy of the uh, natural resources, which bring me immediately to the question with respect to what worlds the Canadian mining corporations... Mm -hmm. Canada, Canadian is a great country, mm -hmm. I have to say yes. to our viewers. Canada is the great country in the world. A lot of immigrants will arrive here. They do get... En tout cas, je préférerais peut-être le dire en français. Beaucoup de Canadiens nouveaux qui arrivent ici, euh, ils sont bien accueillis au Canada. Le Canada a une réforme qui est pratique. Beaucoup d'immigrants qui sont ici sont des investisseurs, ils ont pu investir dans différents domaines, que ce soit dans l'immobilier, dans toutes les affaires que vous pouvez imaginer, le Canada donne ces opportunités. Mais il n'en demeure pas moins, Mary Mina, il n'en demeure pas moins que today, when you're writing, you're reading on the international report from Global Witness, mm -hmm. uh, the UN Security Council report, uh, Human Rights Watch report, and many other international organizations, who followed the human rights violation either in Latin America or Africa, we intend to see a lot of Canadian mining corporations involved mm -hmm. in the practice of committing mm -hmm. violations, and most of which do not respect the ODCD, o OCDC uh, uh, standard, mm -hmm. uh, which is an international standard in which most mining uh, corporations bind mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. do recognize that most Canadian, I don't want to, I don't want to name no, I names here, but I mean, when you look at the situation, I will take the Congo, for example, when the Congo crisis started in 1997, we have identified two major mining, Canadian mining corporations who have financed rebels who have ended up committing a genocide. Today, as a leader, when you're looking at those situations, what would be your approach? Would you have any sort of a recommendation toward the mining industry? toward the government of Canada, mm -hmm. toward supporting perhaps the bill 303 that was pushed forward to the parliament, what would be your intake toward the violation committed by Canadian mining corporations? Well, there's two things. Firstly, there are good Canadian mines as well, Definitely. and that are responsible, mm -hmm. and, and I think we need to acknowledge it. But mm -hmm. where, there are my, if there, where there are Canadian mines who behave badly, for, we as a, when in the parliament, my colleague John McKay passed the bill, mm -hmm which basically said would hold mining, mining companies abroad accountable if they do not meet ethical standards mm -hmm. in those countries. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, current, current government has done nothing about it, but none of that has been used. What I would do is that I would actually, we, we do have the ability in Canada to prosecute mm -hmm. under Canadian law, 
um, corruption that a Canadian company, if a Canadian company has corruption activities outside, mm -hmm. or there's human rights situations um, uh, that that are affected. So, what I would do is I would enforce the bill. Mm -hmm. It's there. We passed the legislation in the Parliament of Canada. There's a law in the books which the current government is ignoring. Mm -hmm. So, if those Canadian companies that that um, do not show uh, um, uh, respect human rights in their in in countries and or in, involve themselves in, in in the local political situation and cause problems there is legislation that basically says we then as a country canada has 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 the, the power the ability to interfere intervene and deal with these companies now the legislation is there we the it was the liberals who put it forward through one of my colleagues uh and it was it passed the house and I would say to you that if well, uh, I know for sure that if we were to be re-elected in the next election, that our government would definitely, obviously, enforce that legislation to make sure that these kinds of uh, situations do not happen. Because, as you know, being someone who worked in, having been the Minister of International Cooperation, I have been in many places and have seen abuse uh, happen with people in their own countries. And not only is it not acceptable, it, it is totally uh, immoral, it, it should be illegal, people should be charged. Nobody should be allowed to treat anyone that way. The reason we, that, that we have the Canadian International Development Agency is to in fact assist with development, not to cause the opposite situation. Vous êtes en Afrique, vous êtes en Europe, vous suivrez oui. la politique canadienne, vous savez, le Canada c'est un pays bilingue. Au Canada, vous pouvez faire vos affaires, vous pouvez vous intégrer, vous développer en français, tout comme vous pouvez vous développer en anglais. La plupart de nos leaders, Maria Mina et beaucoup d'autres, parlent anglais et ils parlent français. Vous avez et italien nombreux. aussi. Et italien aussi, effectivement. <rire> ben, ça sera une opportunité aussi pour vous, n'est-ce pas, de l'entendre parler italien. C'est ça justement la particularité de la diversité culturelle du Canada. Alors, Maria Mina, nous sommes aujourd'hui euh, le 8 euh, euh, mars. C'est la journée internationale de la femme. De la femme. Alors, quel est vous, à tant qu'une leader femme, une leader d'immigration, devenue, enfin, une descendante d'immigration, devenue leader dans la politique canadienne, quelle est cette pensée que vous avez pour la femme en général, pour la femme canadienne, pour la femme immigrante Quel est le message que vous avez pour nos spectateurs qui vous regardent en ce jour spécial qui commémore la femme que vous êtes vous-même Well, the message is Happy International Women's Day, of course, mm -hmm. but sometimes the more things change, the more things stay the same. Okay. You know, that's the saying the English have, you, mm -hmm. two steps, for, one step forward, three back, you know, mm -hmm. that sometimes happens. So, um, women in Canada, it, it, in, around the world, it's pretty similar. Uh, income, for instance, women are still earning 72 cents of the dollar to men. Why is that? Even, even when you take into consideration the university level education. So women who are now actually attending university at a larger percentage than men are, to some degree, in some faculties you have more women than men, um, they're still earning less once they hit. They're, and then, then of course, women in management, especially a, a middle, upper management, are still hitting the ceiling. It, in, on, on boards of directors of large corporations, the, there's only something like, uh, 9% are women, it's a very small number of 16, mm -hmm. that, and, and that's very tragic when especially you do the research that's been done recently after the, the, the crisis, financial crisis, shows that those corporations that had women on their board of directors, mm -hmm. larger number of women, mm -hmm. had fewer financial crises, problems, and less corruption. So obviously having women on the board of directors is actually economically good for the companies. But it's not happening. Members of Parliament, women is only 24% of members of Parliament uh, female in the Government of Canada. That, that puts Canada somewhere on number 48 or 50 in the world. It's, it, it's absolutely unacceptable. Um, so yes, women have made uh, some progress. Unfortunately though, it's not really, really strong enough yet. It's not there. We're not there yet. And so I would encourage all the women to celebrate today because it's our day and mm -hmm. we should do it. But then tomorrow, as, as we say, get back behind that, that, uh, that uh, a, a, a car and push it, and push it up the hill. Uh, we, we have to change our democracy, change our, how, how, we, how we behave, 
because when 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 our for our democracy, even to use just that, does not represent fifty percent of our population, there's something wrong. We cannot re possibly make good, balanced decisions when fifty percent of your people are not even even there. Les réseaux de la diaspora ont toujours souhaité une bonne fête. Nous avons toujours été derrière les dames. Surtout, nous encourageons surtout le leadership féminin, car nous croyons effectivement que il existe des injustices, quoi, et nous croyons avec les réformes appropriées, les femmes prendront un leadership effectif, prendront un leadership cohérent, et pourquoi pas devront nous donner des orientations collectivement pour que notre société soit meilleure. Mayamina, most of the time when I prepare my questions, I'm always have the last question, which is during our interview, we have spoken about economy, we have mm -hmm. spoken about politics, uh, social roles, and so on. If you were to discuss another subject which I haven't brought or thought about, mm -hmm. what would you have to say to our viewer? I would say that my, my main um, passion, mm -hmm. and I would hope that of many people, is to get to a place in our earth, in our planet, where social justice and sustainable uh, justice, sustainable meaning environment, mm -hmm. are, are together and, and are strong. Mm -hmm. So in the world uh, that we live in, and in Canada as well, but in the world that we live in, human rights mm -hmm. is absolute. And for me, human rights means access to employment, to health care, to proper education. So human rights isn't just about protecting me from the, 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 the physical harm in a, in that, in a situation. Mm -hmm. Human rights to me means Yes, right to my to my to my physical um, uh, protection, mm -hmm. but also uh, uh, having access to universal education, universal health care, and, uh, uh, and and housing and so on. Those are also human rights, basic human rights. So it's more than just that. So to me, so justice that's very important. And, and the other, of course, which is goes with this very well, is um, protection of our environment. We are destroying our, our, our world. And a lot, a lot of p people who live in, in countries that are struggling, especially in developing countries, mm -hmm. the environment will affect them even a thousand times more worse than even will affect us. Yes, Canada and other developed countries, when the, as, as our environment gets worse, will be affected. Water levels will go up, we'll have, worse, we'll have droughts and so on. But in the developing world, in the areas that people are already struggling, mm -hmm. the situation will be a hundred times even worse than it already is today, in terms of their ability to produce food for themselves and for the world to, to assist them and, and so on. And I don't think that we can eradicate poverty in, in the world that we live in and give people all the basic rights that they deserve uh, unless we also address the issue of sustainable uh, environmental est-ce que les Canadiens pourront voir un jour Maria Mina, prochain Premier ministre du Canada J'espère. <rire> Pourquoi pas mm. Certainement. Est-ce que Maria Mina aurait un petit mot en français pour nos auditeurs ou éventuellement en italien En italien, oui, c'est vrai. <rire> Mais je, malheureusement, mm. je, je pense qu'aucune personne me comprend en italien. Oh, nous avons nos auditeurs peut-être oui. en Italie, oui, possiblement, <rire> un petit mot, une phrase pour les auditeurs qui ont demandé. J'ai des amis qui viennent de, de euh, euh, Eritrea, ou so, qui sont Somalie, mm -hmm. qui parlent italien très bien. Oui. oui, parce qu'en Italie, c'était là, malheureusement, mais mm -hmm. <rire> je comprends bien. Mm -hmm. Mais pour moi, je, je souhaite à tous les, les citoyens, les, les femmes spécialement aujourd'hui, mm -hmm. que mais, 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 à, mais à tous, que demain euh, nous porte ici au Canada une vie plus, euh, plus euh, pleine de, de, de droits humains, spécialement. La protection des droits humains. Mais les droits humains, comme j'ai mm -hmm. déjà dit, plus large, et pas seulement de, de, de la protection physique, mais je parle des droits humains euh, pour euh, accès à l'éducation, à, 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 à santé, à, à, à toute autre chose. Toute autre chose qui a de mieux que le gouvernement des pays qui nous dirige devrait pouvoir. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, pour nous, je vous ai dit, nous avons eu un grand privilège d'être de, de, reçus par Madame Maria Mina. Elle est engagée personnellement sur le plan social. Elle a beaucoup d'initiatives sociales ici à Toronto. 
nous avons travaillé avec lui dans certaines initiatives et nous vous encourageons d'entrer en contact avec elle. Vous verrez ses coordonnées à passer ici. Son bureau au niveau de Riding DC est toujours effectif. Elle a une équipe qui travaille et je suis sûr qu'ils ont des initiatives nouvelles pour, n'est-ce pas, le Canada meilleur, comme elle vient de le dire. Alors, les réseaux de la diaspora, Diaspora Network 24-7, it's your TV. Vous êtes en Amérique latine, vous êtes en Afrique, vous êtes en Europe. Vous êtes au Canada, aux États-Unis, nous vous informons que nous avons créé cette télévision pour vous permettre, permettre au peuple de la diaspora de connaître justement quelles sont les nouvelles réformes, quelles sont les nouveautés, quelles sont les politiques, que pensent les leaders du pays d'accueil que nous avons choisi pour immigrer. Madame Maria Mina, c'était un plaisir. Merci beaucoup pour votre invitation. Merci nous vous remercions de nous avoir donné cette opportunité et nous espérons surtout que lorsque nous aurons encore des questions, peut-être quand le leadership du Parti libéral sera fini, oui, on se rencontrer encore une fois. pour oui. connaître oui. votre point de vue par rapport aux décisions qui seront prises. Absolument. Avez-vous un autre dernier mot ou bien... Euh... Ah, seulement, euh, à la prochaine. À la prochaine. Ben voilà. Réveil de la diaspora, 24h sur 7, au www.dn247.net. À bientôt.